with NHC refinancing program that's designed with you in mind. Offer valid from February 1st to June 30th. Don't worry. Be happy. The future is unknown. Protect your life, your family, and your valuables from unforeseen circumstances. Let National Caribbean Insurance give you the peace of mind that you so deserve. At NCI, we offer a suite of affordable insurance plans that can be tailored to ease your financial burden. We aim to deliver exceptional products to satisfy all your insurance needs. Whether life, health, motor or property insurance, NCI has the right solution for you. Our friendly and knowledgeable sales professionals are ready and able to assist you. Let National Caribbean Insurance Company Limited help you to prepare for the unexpected. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. And welcome to another edition of Power Talk. My name is Patrice Harris and I am the Corporate Communications Manager at Skellig. Power Talk is a radio program brought to you by the St. Kitts Electricity Company Limited, where we seek to keep our customers and consumers informed of all of the latest happenings at Skellig. Allow me to take this opportunity to welcome you into February. February is a great month for many reasons. I'm told that there's some very lovely people who were born in February. Uh, but also because it's Valentine's Day and it's also the month that we celebrate Black History Month. And so this morning we are discussing the topic of electrical safety. I'm sure you've heard us spoken about this on several occasions before, but we can't speak about it too much because electricity is very, very dangerous. And to discuss this topic with me, I have two members of the control and operation department, and I'm going to allow each of these gentlemen to introduce themselves to our listeners and viewers. 
Yes, um, good morning everyone. Good morning, Nation of St. Kitts and Nevis and beyond. My name is Javid Gilbert. I am Control and Operations Superintendent at <coughs> SELEC. Uh, good morning everyone. Um, I'm Wycliffe Clark, Control and Operations Supervisor. All right, good morning, Javid, and good morning, Wycliffe. Thank you for joining us this morning. I know Javid has been here on several occasions, but Wycliffe, we extend a special welcome to you being your maiden visit. All right, so we're here to talk about electrical safety. And one of the, one of the basis or the, the premise that we want to establish is why is it important for not only the persons who use electricity but also the persons who work with electricity persons who install electricity to practice electrical safety we have to establish that why very early so why is that well one of the reasons why you need to be um practice safety it helps it's as you know safety is, is um done to prevent it's a means of preventing something that you do not wish to happen from happening yes um as i said i would like to also add on that yes um electricity everyone know it's a modern form of energy that we use in society in different ways and uh, one of the things that comes with electricity is um it can be a hazard a health hazard to any person that expose themselves in a in in a indirect way or direct way that without using the proper safety protocols and some of these safety protocols that we go along we will break down and speak to but safety is a is a important it's very important to practice safety anytime um <coughs> when you're doing um, electrical work and and things like that and also customers when they even when they go on to doing different things like you know what i mean you're a normal person who go use the switch and stuff like that there are different things that you should practice from um, hurting yourself so let's talk about what what those tips are what is it that the average consumer a user of electricity should bear in mind and what is it that persons who are installing and working with electricity should bear in mind so let's start with the consumer Okay, yes, we can go about in, in terms of speaking up to the consumers. So, you know, um, Easter is coming up, so, you know, you will have a lot of Easter cleaning. And one of the things that, that you might look at, your, your, your fixtures and um, different things that may um, have dust and stuff like that, dust laden. And then, you know, you need to clean and you need to have your house looking um, clean mm -hmm. and in a, in a particular way. Mm -hmm. Some of these things, what you need to do... Um, seek advice from an electrician you know you say you tell electrician you know you have your your vanity whatever it could be electrical uh you have your your, sh your lamp shade and different things that is in the house that are electrical and you see that they are dusty and you need them to clean so you add you take advice from your electrician you might tell you well you know okay i'll pass by take down the lamp shade and you could clean them or if you know uh, he give you the relevant information in how to go about in cleaning your lampshades, your different um, appliances and keep them, keep yourself safe and even the equipment safe because you could also um, damage your equipment by doing certain things that cause them not to work effectively uh, uh, down that path line basically. So when we're talking about the cleaning, sometimes the cleaning does involve water. Yes. So let's talk about it from that perspective as mm -hmm. well and how that could be a bit of a hazard. Yes. Um, okay, for instance, um, you have your lampshade. See, the, it's, it, it accumulated dust. You, you know, you, you, you recognize that you could screw it off. You screw it off, you take it down, you clean it. Well, you might use a little soapy water. You clean it and then you leave it there to dry rather than reinstall it right away let it dry let it and then after it fully dried you could um reinstall it and uh, one of the things they make sure the switch is off the light is not on um that's that's one of the first thing you make sure when you're doing um such practices in terms of um cleaning your lampshade your microwave same thing disconnect your microwave clean it you know we have a lot of electrical stove you know we have to clean them Disconnect them, clean them, your refrigerator, um, also clean it. And it, one of the things with the refrigerator, <clears throat> after you clean it, don't pack 
all of your fruits and your vegetables, your meat and what or whatever you normally pack in the refrigerator. Um, leave them out, put on the refrigerator and let it run for an hour or so, so you could build back up the um, the coolness and then you could um, pack your stuff back into the fridge. That is also a good practice to um, keep your appliance going as long as possible. So outside of the cleaning, what other general safety tips when it comes to electricity is it that we can provide to the consumers? Even when it comes to appliances, what, 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 what can we share with the consumers? Um, I would say one need to familiarize yourself with the basics. You got, you got basic understanding of how things operate. Then to, um, the next thing you should have is so understand your equipment. Mm -hmm. Something you need to inspect the equipment for damages and stuff like that. If you got equipment that has a damaged card and stuff like that, don't try to use it because then you know you could cause a shot or something like that. That could cause an electrical fire also, depending on where it is. You know, you could cause a cause of soak it in it also trip. Mm -hmm. Something you have feedbacks. So it's something you need to inspect these equipments. The other thing I could say is um, you gotta use, if you're doing certain work, you need to use the right tools. So we're on the for persons to install now? Yes, they need uh -huh. to use the right tools. Um, well, not necessarily. Some people are do-it-yourselfers. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, you know, so some people don't have the right tools, so you find that they might be using like a knife mm. to do sort of thing that's dangerous. You know, mm. there's, there's, there's no insulation on a knife. Mm -hmm. to protect you from electrocution and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you need to obviously use the right tools, using a screwdriver, you need to use proper electrical tools. Mm -hmm. Because that can create a hazard in yes. and of itself. Yes, a hazard in itself. What, what advice do we have, because uh, Javin mentioned earlier <coughs> about speaking to your electrician, what advice do we have to people who are, as you said, do it yourself, or uh, feel like they know what the right mm -hmm. way is to do it and they can really be causing harm or uh, there's a risk for harm to themselves and others so what advice do we have to those persons uh, um, what they are, uh, yes um they have people who love to go on youtube <laughs> and you know you pull up something and you can and knock you youtube see, university I, all the time <laughs> but, I understand. but you know but you, you go and you see something and then you practicing but in the caribbean and especially us here, I could speak here, to us here, like America, America would have certain standards and sometimes depending on the, the, the coding, the wire code system like the white normal would be neutral, neutral and neutral. the black would be the phase down here mm -hmm. it might be brown, mm -hmm. um, blue and green depending on the color arrangement and sometimes people just attach, just match and um, Connect a car into a tet, but within that doing that, especially when it comes to the water heaters, them those instant mm. water heaters that you know at the shower head, mm. people, you know, what I mean, they have a lot of people who like to do it themselves. And when then they would call me maybe a week or two after, say they in the bath again in shock. Mm. Javid come, and then when I go there, <laughs> when I go there, I would see that you know, you wire, you wire the appliance um, incorrectly, so I would do those corrections, but. As you know, they have the persons out there who are adventurous. I mean, I, when I was a teenager, um, mm. I was interested in electrical and, you know, mm. I did my own little thing and then I learned. I get a little shot here and there. <laughs> but but I, learned, I, learned, I learned along the way. So it's, one of the thing is to be read. Well read. Read, read, understand what is electricity, as Mr. Um, Clark already mentioned. Know what you are dealing with because you cannot just go into something and then you do not know. How to start, especially the safety part of it. Know what safety measures that needs to be taking place before you um, go as far in doing your job. So we've spoken about the home, but some of the other challenges that we tend to encounter at Skellig is when persons go with heavy machinery and they start to dig. So we want to take this opportunity now to explain <laughs> How that should work, why why we should take electrical safety into consideration when that does happen. And then we want to speak about the vehicle collisions as well. But let's start with the digging. What's the right way? How do how <laughs> what should you do if you want to go and dig? And why should you be mindful? Well, yeah, it's it, and, and the digging portion of it. Um 
before anyone with heavy machinery, uh, any excavation workers would, would call it, start. If, they, if they're not sure of um, any underlying cables that are gone, they should contact Skelec mm -hmm. and have us come and verify if they could dig in the area or not. Sometimes they might be where they need to dig, there might be a cable. One of our team members, a uh, representative, would stick, stick around just so that to make sure everything goes well. Mm -hmm. Then for them to just go and dig, then you hit a underground cable, which is 11,000 volts, and mm -hmm. then you just hear boom. Mm -hmm. Then you find that a feeder goes out. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, as, as to that, yes, we had an experience uh, just a month ago concerning that same matter where, you know, um, excavation was done at, at a side at a particular road and then we had some outages. Um, as Mr. Clark said, investigate. Um, normally, water department, electrical, um, St. Is Electricity Company, our utilities, something, yeah, uh, something cable and wireless and cable TV walk side by side because in planning, in government planning, there would a lot of space along the side of the government road where that we sh where we should put our utilities, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> in doing so, um, customers who are interested to do is whatever form of digging for whatever business or whatever purpose should call mention that to all departments, call all the utilities on the island, and mention to them that you know we're doing some form of excavation, and um, is there any um utility cables water pipe uh, anything of that sort any service that is run underground before doing any digging so that is very very important and the um the vehicle accident and you know vehicle hitting poles mm -hmm. and you know those are those are things that we recognize would happen in certain p particular areas um more frequently than, than that for whatever reason i do not know they said the poles come out in the streets too. <laughs> probably probably that would happen but what i would say um when you're driving um be aware of your surroundings um when you hit a pole don't just turn off and go about your business say well i'm safe everything is you know, but you you don't know what would happen down the road might be someone who will related to you coming down the pole coming down the road and the pole fall on that vehicle or something make a report there are procedures to things you know what i mean to take care of that when you let us be aware another passerby and they see some accident and you recognize a vehicle sped off after they hitting a pole that would normally happen a lot on the um the kim collins highway the mm. ft ft um yes. ft highway where where you know we have those um erected um, metal poles, light poles, where customers would just, um, well, a driver mm -hmm. would hit the pole and then turn off. But most of the time, you know, cameras everywhere, we, we end up getting, mm -hmm. we end so up getting so the number. Well just don't, just don't we do it. We end up getting the number of the, um, the, the, the person who drive, who drive off, leaving, leaving that havoc there. But then also when you on the highway and you see loose wires, like especially like you know sometimes a pole get knocked down and we do not we are not aware there's no follow up make reports concerning that and then we will um also go go there as soon as possible to clear up um those hazards all right so we have spoken about why it's important to practice electrical safety we've also sp given some tips to help you around the home and when you're installing electricity or working with electricity do remember that they Protective gear is very important to reduce harm to yourself and to others and as well when it comes to damaging equipment. One of the things that we're going to talk about before we open the lines, and I'm going to open the lines in a few so you can start calling now while the gentlemen respond to these questions. What are some of the potential risks or hazards that can occur if, it, if we don't practice electrical safety? So if we don't wear the gear, if we don't do what we're supposed to do what can happen i know it's gruesome sometimes but mm -hmm. what can happen there are various things that can happen if you if you don't practice safety uh, one of the main things which everybody is afraid of is being electrocuted mm -hmm. you know it's um 
uh, it's not a nice feel for some, you know, because um, should be for anyone. <laughs> well, it depends because oh, okay. it, it depends on the amount of voltage you have because it, it could be a low voltage, it mm -hmm. could be a little tingle, as some would call it. It should be a sign that you need to do something. Mm -hmm. It could be something of a higher voltage that could be your fall and then your fall, it hit your back of your head, something like that. So mm -hmm. you, you don't want to get electrocuted, you don't want to. If you don't practice it, you get electrocuted, you could cause an electrical fire mm -hmm. if you're not practicing the safe stuff. And we don't want any don't of want those that. any of those at all yeah. to happen. No. Alright, remember that the lines are open, so if there is anyone who would like to call in with a question or provide comments or feedback, the lines are open, so feel free to call in. Javid, you were mentioning? Um, yes, um, to add more on that, uh, yep also others not because you uh, thinking you're risking your life doing something uh, unprofessionally uh, without using the proper safety you could affect others around you know it could be a passerby it could be one of your family members you in your household you have a, a job card that have breaks in different areas your child just run on the job card he got could get shocked one thing about electricity sometimes especially depending on the voltage it holds you until it finish with you wow. and that's the, and yes. that's and that's we have and a that, that is a problem yes, all right one, one moment mm. we do have a caller good morning caller mm. you're live welcome to power talk good morning good morning um i'm here listening to the program and i'm very pleased to hear how the gentleman um explain himself about electrical wiring um I could remember I got married in 2003 and I was living at Sydney. And uh, I had my wedding cake in the freezer, right? And uh, one day I went to the freezer to look for some, some relish to cook. And I realized that something was picking me in my finger. Mm -hmm. But before that, I know I was using um, steel wool. I was thinking that was maybe in my finger and it so happened that my hand touched and the, the first paper that the cake was wrapped up in and it kind of hold me but I tried to pull my hand quick yes. you know and I mm. went outside and I was wondering why this happened because I never experienced something like that well okay going forward one time we had a, um, a hurricane and it was bad and it had a noise in the main switch, the, the box, you know, and it was making so much noise that every time a lightning flash, it, um, it's like it light up. And uh, me and my family in the house, we get so frightened, don't know what to do. And it so happened that after the hurricane and stuff, I call, I call an electrician to see what's going on. And to our surprise, that electrician said to me, Yolo, you are lucky that you, they ain't fine, are you in the house there? Wow. I was wondering why he said that, and he said, come you see. It was one of um, them, them houses, the, the what you call them houses, for the government bill. So to me, they build a house and probably it wasn't an real electrician who, who, who wired the house. Uh, if, it was, if it was a qualified electrician who wired the house, I don't think that house was inspected. What did happen? He said the, the current wasn't flowing on the outside. Everything was back up on the inside everything was backed up on the inside and you know these are things people have to be so fearful with because they're going to do it to get the money but they're not thinking about other people's life mm -hmm. you understand they're not thinking about other people's life because my husband had children and they was grown at that time but then they said to me, when this incident happened, they said to me, they remember every time they turn on the switch to put on the light, they feel in a pinch, but they were small. They didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. 
you know. Mm -hmm. But I'll say, you know, I give God thanks because I had an old time machine. When the machine, washing machine, we could take out, out the water and put in the thing to spin. And I used to put my hand in that machine to take out the clothes to put it in the other part oh, wow. to spin. Wow. You know? Mm -hmm. And so people have to be so careful yes, when they wire in people's house. Not just for the sake of the money, but for the sake of mm -hmm. other people's life. Well, yeah. Carla, we want to thank you for calling in and sharing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that the gentleman will provide some feedback, but we, we thank you for, for sharing that experience because I'm sure that we'll get some other persons to start thinking about what they might be experiencing around their home mm -hmm. that they might think is a common occurrence but really isn't a common occurrence that they should seek some professional expertise in so thank you so much for calling yes. Jiki, do we have any more callers on the line all right david or, or wycliffe mm -hmm. we want to respond to the, the ladies comments about persons doing wearing that really you know might yeah. not have done it the best yes um that I'm so happy that the lady brought up such of a occurrence that this is something that we will get a call from a customer basically um, weekly maybe a few times a week they, they would say that they will be getting shock in their home uh, there is something that you know maybe other utility person outside doing work and there and the cable and the fiber optic cable or what's not and they recognize they getting shock on the pole and the, the, these are something that would happen, especially when it comes to um, new houses. A uh, uh, very old, abandoned house might have electrical electricity in there. Uh, there is um, someone who newly installed some form of, of appliance, and that causing a feedback onto our line, and, and that fee and that feedback would spread to, throughout all customers. So, everything that I'm going to ask is a pause for a minute because I think we have another caller. Okay. So let's take Perfect. that caller. Good morning, Carla. You're live. Thank you for joining Power Talk. Hi, good morning. I'm living at Curtis Pastor Tabernacle. There is a line about two months ago uh, that is down. I keep complaining about it and nothing is done to it. Could somebody please come and check it? I have a stick that is shoving it up because it's an electrical live wire. The place that it is located, when you come up on the main road in Tabernacle, it's the second road down on your left hand side. Not the road, there's a road by the Prime Minister got to go down former, and then there's another road. Please, can somebody come and look after it? Do we need Next contact? Again, we outside need contact again, again, there's a white, there's a post with a transformer. Whenever it rains, it plop, 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 like pitch fire. And I'm tired of complaining. I can't area? do anymore. And this is my last talking about it. No thanks. Carla, Carla, before you go. Yeah. It, the, 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 the pole with the transformer that sparks is in the same area with the line that's down? No, this one is outside next to the uh the field in Tabernacle. But the line we... wire is on the second road coming up. No, the one with the Wire is on the second road when you come up in Tabernacle on your right hand side. Okay, so this Carla, we need some road. we need some contact information for when the teams are dispatching. Hello? I will need a, a contact in number, some contact information for when the team is go going out. My contact number? Yes, please. My number is six six four four eight zero three. All right, thank you so much for calling, and the team will reach out to you today, okay? Please, I would like it to be done as soon as possible. It's been right. over two months yes. now. Thanks in advance. Happy New Year. And what's your name, Carla? Oh, Hello? She had no idea. Okay. Know All right, uh, Dickie, looks like we have one more, one more caller. So let's <coughs> take that last caller. Good Hello. morning, Carla. Hello, praise the Lord. <laughs> It'll always be the last call. <laughs> you know, do not laugh, my president, my daughter in law, my president. Oh, God, do not laugh. Hello? Continue, love, God. Hello? 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 Hello?
I just work in department. I had fun when I was working there. And if I don't have fun, I'm having fun right now because a big TV in my house right now I watch every day. And that comes from my darling Kelly, especially Mr. Freak. So, morning to everybody. I love you all. And I want to say thank you all for remembering me. I done on the rule for Valentine's Day. Thank you all very much. And congratulations to Hanif. GQ, he won the phone. I was inquiring about him because I know him. He won the phone from Digicel. Everybody has a blessed day, Kevin, I did, I miss small, I feel my everybody. <laughs> all right, thank you for calling, Lula. Thank you for all, all right. of this. Love you all. Have love a good time. Bye-bye. Love you, Lula. Love you. Okay, so yeah. we want to thank all of the callers who call in this morning. We just have about five more minutes where we need to wrap up. And I know I, I cut you off about twice, Javid, so I'll allow you mm. to finish your thoughts if you do remember them. But we also want to take the opportunity to advise customers Perhaps Wycliffe can respond to this. How do we, what what should they do when there's an electrical right. hazard? So just like how they call in and they mention about, you know, turning on the light switch and feeling a little pinch or what, whatever <coughs> they are experiencing or customers, what is it that they should do? So Javid will provide his wrap up and continue where he left off and Wycliffe will tell us about what should the customers do when there is an electrical safety hazard. Mm -hmm. So as as I was mentioning, yeah, um, from what the customer said, um, she being shocked everywhere in her house. She basically she touching, she being she being getting shocked. Yes, that could be, as I said, two reasons: either that you're hurting in the at the house, you're hurting. That's one part. The electrician will have to check, make sure that the hurting is well, and also make a report to Skelec when the electrician said it is not. It is not from the house and then we will come and we will do our investigation on the line and figure out which customer is um, sending out that feedback. Now, <clears throat> when we complete our investigation, we find out whose house or what um, apartments is sending out this feedback, we will disconnect the customer. We will disconnect them until they have the electrician come and rectify that problem. They will not be connected until that is resolved. There's um, some other instances that probably the inspectors, the government inspectors, will have to come back into the area and we inspect that house to make sure that everything is um, up to electrical standard accordingly and then we will reconnect them from there. All right, thank you, Javed. Michael? <coughs> yes, um, for your question, what is when there's an electrical safety hazard? What should customers do? Um, for residents, I would say, um, if you know it, you know it's a safety home, you're sure about something. Contact a electrician, and not just any electrician, a competent electrician. Mm -hmm. Certified. I use the word competent. Yeah, but. Um, as I say, we got a lot of people who um you know who do it a little bit YouTube, not knocking the YouTube thing. Mm -hmm. So you welcome me, because you may get you interested in the field, and then you, you know. Mm -hmm. But then um get a competent electrician to troubleshoot and let you know what what and somewhat educate you as to what um what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, if if you're out in the public and you. See electrical hazard uh, where Skillet should be involved, then you, you call Skillet, you know, 2013. Mm -hmm. That's the hotline, and then we would dispatch our technicians to come and assess the issue. All right, so, so there you have it to our listening and viewing audience. Safety does not only benefit us, but it benefits you as well. If you recognize that there is any potential safety hazard or any ongoing safety hazard, please call our emergency hotline for 65 or 600 from a cell phone and we will readily dispatch a team to come and do an investigation. We really want our customers to Pay attention to electrical safety in your homes because we've already learned today what the 
what can happen if we don't pay attention to electrical safety and if we don't consider it as important. I want to thank both Javid and Wycliffe for joining me on here this morning. It is always a good feeling to have your colleagues here sharing with the public and being able to respond to the, the, the questions and the complaints as well from our callers. Thank you for tuning in and do continue to enjoy Love Month. We'll be back on the 15th with another exciting show. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>